Palestinian himself. What people would call that, they would call it cultural appropriation. But uh, from a Palestinian like point of view, this is not appropriation. This is theft. You know, you don't reappropriate my land. You steal my land. You don't reappropriate my culture. You steal my culture. We are part of the Fertile Crescent where humans first developed agriculture. Jericho is the oldest continuously inhabited town on earth. This is where humans first, you know, domesticated plants and animals. And we have a lot of biodiversity here. And people have lived in harmony with nature in those uh, villages for thousands of years. The problem, the conflict we have now is first and foremost conflict about land because we have foreigners who came, they want the land without the people. Uh, this is colonialism. So Jewish uh, Europeans wanted this area, which was called Palestine, to become Jewish State of Israel. To do that, they depopulated, they ethnically cleansed 530 Palestinian villages and towns. And today, 7 million of us Palestinians are refugees or displaced people. Out of a total of 12 million Palestinians in the world, I'm 26 years old, a third generation of the displaced people of Ikhret. Uh, about Ikhret, Ikhret was a Palestinian Christian village here in the Galilee. About 450 people uh, lived here as farmers. We mainly worked in agriculture of tobacco, olives, peach, and with whatever we can grow here. In 1948, an operation called Operation Haram. Uh, the military got into the village and the citizens here in, in Ikhret heard that the war was over because it was after the declaration of the State of Israel. After two weeks, the general decided to move us to a near village called uh, Rami village uh, with a verbal promise that uh, they will get us back in uh, two weeks. These two weeks didn't end until now, 60 year, uh, 68 years after. It took us from the 48 until 51, we reached the Supreme Court and we got a decision that said that the government should let us go back to our lands. Six months after, on 24 of December, Christmas Eve, the military entered the village and destroyed all the houses and everything that was here. The only buildings uh, remaining after the military damaged the village uh, are the church and the cemetery. And in the cemetery, uh, we got permission in the 70s to come back and get and bury our uh, our death people here in the cemetery. When the British uh, colonial power started to promote the immigration of the Israeli settlers, the Jewish settlers at that time, from Europe to Palestine. And they take the Palestinian farmers' land and settle them on this land and train them in their military. In 1948, with the Palestinian Nakba, the first law that Israel, when they became a state, denounced them as a state issue, was right of return law. It is by itself, it is, it is racist, very racist, because in this law, they give the right for any Jew who's living anywhere in the world, the right to come to Palestine. While they deprive this right from the Palestinian, that they, they expel him from his land and destroy his village just two weeks ago. You should remember that the state of Israel was established on a made-up 
uh, slogan says Israel is a country that uh, exists in a land without people for people without land. So they succeeded in kicking out about 68% of Palestinians from Palestine. So you eliminate the people and then you go on to eliminating the evidence of people's existence. And the evidence of people's existence is the olive tree itself. The different ways that the State of Israel uses systematically in order to destroy Palestinian olive trees can be identified in, uh, in five different ways. One of them is building Jewish-Israeli settlements. There is uh, more than 190 Jewish-Israeli settlements that are built throughout the occupied uh, West Bank to make room for more than 750,000 Jewish-Israelis. You remember, these settlers live under Israeli civil law that is superior to the Israeli military law imposed on the Palestinian population here. And so Israel was created here, and then Israel occupied the West Bank and Gaza Strip in the second stage in 1967, and started to build colonies here. If some European Jews think that they have privilege, they are chosen people, and so any Jew in the world can come here, get automatic citizenship, live on stolen Palestinian land, get government subsidy, Uh, the second way of destruction of olive trees um, happens also by the State of Israel in order to build roads to connect these uh, Jewish settlements together with the State of Israel. Like uh, the State of Israel has built more than or paved more than 1,600 kilometers of uh, roads throughout the occupied West Bank. Uh, we call them pass by or bypass roads. Uh, it's very easy to know what was there before the Israeli road. Uh, all you need to do is to look on both sides of the road. If you see olive trees, then you're driving on what used to be an olive grove or an olive uh, field. The third way of destruction uh, is what Palestinians, primarily Palestinians in the uh, occupied Gaza Strip, are, have suffered through, which is destruction of their olive trees through military operations. The fourth way of destruction is by building the uh, Israeli wall throughout the West Bank. The land of the West Bank is about 5,500 uh, square kilometers altogether, and 3% of that was destroyed to install the uh, Israeli wall, to separate Palestinians from their land and to separate Palestinians from Palestinians. <laughs> In some places you can see that on both sides of that wall there are olive trees. I'm <laughs> <laughs>
The first man who come to this checkpoint me at 2 o'clock a.m. I come here to sell coffee and tea for the worker who crossed to Jerusalem. This is the main checkpoint, 300 in Bethlehem. Uh, every day more than 6,000 to 7,000 workers cross to this checkpoint to Jerusalem. From Bethlehem, from Hebron, from all the village around the two cities. If you are in Palestine and you have permission to work in Jerusalem, you are a lucky man because there is strong condition to get the permission. Like your age of 30, you should be married, you should be have kids, you should be have white list with the Israeli government. And you should be paid for the Israeli employer who give you the bare mission like $500 each month. And you should be come early to cross the checkpoint early. If you late one day, the Israeli employer listen from your salary. They work in the construction, most of them. And inside the Palestinian Authority, it's difficult to get the work and very less salary, you know. But inside, it's, it's a good salary. People they die here because it's very crowded. They wish that people wait six hours, five hours. <laughs> Inside the one strong control. They fix your fingers, your uh, your ID, your bear machine. If you have any coins, sometimes you should be remove your clothes, you remove your shoes. Good morning. Yes, <laughs> For me, I live in a small village near Bethlehem. The core village, I, we are people who eat from what we grow. If we have the land and we have the water, that's enough. We don't need internet, we don't need bank, we don't need amazing life, just simple life. Some sheep, some chicken, some land, and that's it, you know. In 1999, I have big land for my family, for the world, trees, almond, grapes, and we have flat land, we grow vegetable and the fruit and the amazing thing. You know, when we grow the olive trees, we wait five years to cut the olive. And we take care of these trees like your son, you know. And we have a trees, the age of these trees more than 100 years ago, you know. Suddenly they, they destroyed our trees, they destroyed our land. And they put fence before my land to take, to make the settlement big. But from our pocket, you know, our land. When you see your mother catch the trees before the bulldozer destroyed it, this is make your heart broken and you can't do anything. 